Pressurization units are not complicated. When you'll first see them, they look a little bit weird, just like some boxes with some pipes coming in and coming out. But then if you remove the front lid, you'll gain access inside. You will see the pumps, the pressure sensor, the water tank and the floating valve. They many types of pressurization units, but even if they differently configure, they do the same thing. If you'll take a step further and if you remove the top lid, you will gain access to the printed circuit board or the control box and then you will be able to trace the cable which goes into the pumps and into the sensors. Onto the printed circuit board or the box, the function of each input and output, it is clearly written. As you will see here, I just uh, colored with red one output and you will see one pump is running. The output number one is send uh, an input to pump number one and the pump number one is running. So the input number one or the relay number one is start the pump number one. The pressurization unit's PC board control will alternate both pumps because he, it wants to use them equally. So the system runs beautifully. Anytime if there is a pressure demand, the pressurization unit will provide water into the system with a specific pressure. But sometimes pump can burn. And when the system will try to alternate the pumps, if found the pump number two burn, it will trigger a fault. Once this fault happens, the technicians are rushing to turn on the bypass valve and to fill the system manually. But when they leave the premises, the system loses the pressure again in one, two days, one week, and they have to drive back sometime hundreds of miles. So while the customer think we are wizards and we can do everything, I suggest we tell them the truth. We use only our brain and we try to find solutions. Solutions for every single problem. So a very good idea in this situation if we have two pumps, it is to analyze quickly the printed circuit board, as you will see. We have two relays, relay number one, which drives pump number one, and relay number two, which drives pump number two. But pump number two is faulty. So if we pull out the pump number two, and we will connect in parallel the relay number one and relay number two, the relay number two will drive pump number one as much as the relay number one will drive pump number one. It's a parallel connection, because the printed circuit board does not know which pump is running. It just need to be a pump. So once you fix this problem, you turn it on and do a test. As you'll see, the relay of pump number two, it's running the pump number one because they connect it in parallel. And then the relay number one, it will run the pump number one. So the system will believe it's alternate the pump, but the system will run actually only one pump. Then you don't have to come every day to fill the system. So then you remove the pump and you'll tell the customer that he doesn't have a backup pump. His system runs in only one pump and if you lose that pump he will have to call you every week to balance his system and to use the bypass to fill his system if the system have a permanent leak or is very big. So here in this design, on the right hand side, I uh, made this picture so you see how the system is electrically configured. You will see you have all kind of alarm, high, high pressure, alarm low pressure, it is governed by the pressure sensor and then you have a high and uh, low level in a tank. So that will tell you if the floating valve works correctly. And also you have the two relays which uh, drives the pumps. This is pretty easy and uh, I wish you uh, good luck and I hope you'll do very well.